in the past we did the percent run indexers, but I don't think that's gonna work anymore because I'm doing relative imports and that never works. So I have to instead from nasdaq.indexers import star. Oops, I could have done, now I can say main, I'm hoping. Uh, I think that's gonna also give me an error because it's, I don't have everything moved over to that. Uh, it's in indexers. There is this fine main. Uh, there's some things that I haven't taken care of. Like the vocab is not being passed in, I think. Uh, let's make sure fine vocab. Yep, right there. Oh no, that should be creating from that. So that's not a problem. Uh, there's some here. Now it's finally gotten me the error message because the vocab doesn't appear on line 148 is the problem. So it's not in main, it's all the way up here. Index vectors. Okay. Uh, this is an example query. It doesn't need to be in the, uh, okay, now nah, that should be just fine. We don't need to be doing an example. Where is the actual, oh, that's, the, this is doing resources on a particular, this is weird. I don't think I need any of that because the index has been created. And this is just keeping track of resources, how much, uh, time and memory was taken up by it. I think this is creating the vector, so I don't need to do anything. I'm not sure what a lot of other stuff was for. I need to clear. The disadvantage of not doing the percent run is you have to restart every time you do something new. But I've done a clever trick that you might not be aware of. In Python, in the main function, what I've done is, in order to make everything appear in the global namespace, I've taken the globals, which is a dictionary, and I'm doing a dot update on that dictionary with all the variables that I want to be added to the global namespace. So this is a dictionary of that resources data frame, the index itself, the vectors, the list of vectors, the vocabulary, and that number of vectors integer that we uh, use to create that thing. Looks like it should complete this time. It could be, sometimes it's tricky to avoid echo and things by having your laptop in the same room, but it's probably easier to look on my shoulder anyway. Let's see. Okay, so now we've got um, this list of vectors. So that's going to be in this index object. Oops, what did I call that? How did I return that thing? I hope I returned it. Oh, darn. I just returned results, which is, oh, the index is in the results. So I should have updated the namespace. I'll check and see what's in the results. Uh, okay, let's say results equals underscore. Make sure I've got it. Just a square bracket index. So it didn't do what I was hoping to do, and it didn't actually put that word index in the global namespace. Let's see what globals has. It is a dictionary. Uh, let's do dot keys. This should be the same as who. There's nothing called index there. Interesting. Oh, well. We'll worry about that some other time. So that, that clever trick I did wasn't so clever. It didn't work. But at least I've got the results. And I've got it in that results dictionary. Um, so now let's say uh, index.query. I think let's see what, if I have any a good doc string on that index. Ooh, index equals equals. Uh, that was uh, results square bracket index. Let's see if we can think of something fun to do here. Um, so we're gonna do. Synonym substitution, uh, what, what are some good things we've done in the past? So we've used Kamal's name in the past. 
that may or may not be in this smaller. Uh, I forgot how this works. Dot query. Okay. Uh, query the training graph data for the K nearest neighbors. That's right. So I think I've modified that to be allow us to give us a name, but I'm not sure. To give us a, a string. Because normally it's supposed to be a set of integers. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what this index object does. I've forgotten. So I've, I've overridden a lot. Of, so it's based on the pin descent um, index object, but I've modified it a bit. So the query function takes, uh, creates an array, query data, reshaping it. Uh, so it's, I'm just not sure, maybe I put the, the vocab in there, because there's no, there's no vocab recorded here, so it's not taking, it can't take in words probably. Let's see. Um, vocab, square bracket, Kamal. Let's see if in Kamal's in there. Uh, that's right, it's in the results. This is why I like run so much. I don't have to keep remembering to do this sort of thing. Let's see if they capitalized it. Oh, they did. And what about lowercase Kamal? Okay, good. We can do it that way. And that gives me the number. Hey, Kamal, how are you doing? Hi, Hobson, John, and Maria. Uh, this will be index.query. Hey, Kamal, good seeing you. Good to see you too. Uh, this needs to be a vector. Ah, so I need to get the, create the vectors. Vex. Okay, let's let's do that. that. That'll be our job today. Let's change this function to do all the stuff that I'm having trouble remembering. So I'm going to do a query word. So the first step is to get the. Do I have, have I stored the the vocab here? Ah. Uh, I'll have to store the vocab when I initialize this index, I guess. X vectors. I had a lot of other these getters and setters, so you could. This is what I've done in the past. This is what I was talking about earlier, Maria, if you're still there, that I keep redoing old work. Because uh, I get stuck in these things. Let's see. If, let's go ahead and do it anyway. Okay. Uh, so. I need this needs to be a vector, so I need to say self dot first. I need to find the index number or the vector, I guess. Uh, okay, I'm going to create so the data is going to contain all of the vectors. I'm going to also add something for the vocab equals uh, nine. And if, they, if we don't pass a vocab, we'll just assume the vocab is the integers. Uh, uh, this means we're going to have to recreate the index. Okay, let's just let's get the, the code working manually first, and then we'll worry about uh, creating this query word thing. So uh, I don't have to pass recreate the index since that takes several minutes. Um, let's say so we need to get the vector. So vex equals results vex. I hope it's in the results. Yes, it is. Woohoo! Vex. And now we go to vocab, and then we go to Kamal. Okay, we got the vector now. So now we can pass that into the query function. Index.query. And then it can reshape that 300 dimensional array into a one by 300 dimensional array and give us a bunch of indexes back. And then we have to grab the zeroth one and the zeroth 
number. Okay, there it is. That's the array. Still an array. And I can do that index on the vocab. Dot I look, I think, vocab. Vocab. And that'll give us the words. I would like to automate all of this so that we don't. For now, I'll just create a global. What have I done with that indexer if I don't even, if I can't pick in words and all? Anyway, we've, we've done this before. We found Ataturk and we found other names that are related to uh, Kamal in the past. Now, let's think how we can use this for the thing, anything that y'all are working on. So, Vish is going to be working on a synonym substitutor. So why don't we use this to do a synonym substitutor? Um, I'm going to use a, 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 a quote from a book that I'm reading right now. We are all we all are one. And if we forget it, we I'm going to I'm going to put spaces before the period so it'll be easier to tokenize. Actually, we don't need to because we'll use spacey. Uh, Import spacey. Make sure spacey is available. Darn. Okay, so we can't use spacey to tokenize it, so we'll go back to the old way. Uh, we don't need spacey for that anyway. Dot split. So this will be sent s equals the sentence tokenized. Okay, now let's say tokes, that's a better variable name. Uh, tokes for token tokes. Let's, maybe we should create a, um, a function that uses global variables to do that lookup. So we get this list. We need, we need a function that we call, that we send it, give it a word and it's, it gives us back a list of words. Uh, let's just create that function real quick. Def uh, get nearest. It's going to need all those pieces. It's going to need the index, and then we'll ultimately that'll be the self. Uh, it's going to need the vocab, and it's going. Does it need anything else? I don't think it needs anything else. Oh, it needs vex. It needs vex. That index thing already has the vex in it. I just read, I think it does. Did I, did I store them? I should have, but I didn't. So uh, let's see if uh, data is an attribute of that index thing. Anyway, uh, index dot data. Okay, let's see what things we do have in index. Um, delta, is there underscore data? There's no data stored here. Hmm. Compressed, compressed, dim, low memory, max canvas, metric. I don't see anything that holds the actual vectors that we passed into this thing. Press index is sparse. Okay, so I'm gonna, that's something I'm going to have to store in the index object in the future. I'm going to go ahead and do that before I forget it. I guess we'll have some more. Sure, sounds good. This is the vex that would normally be passed in. And I've got, and I'll go ahead and put. Go ahead and set these two things up. Self dot data and self dot vocab. Do I really want to call it data? If it's not already called data, why would I call it data? I guess that's just what happens in the parent function. It, it brings it in as an attribute, I mean, I mean, as an argument called data, but somehow it doesn't store it. Really weird. Dist args, distance function is sparse. Raw data, there it is. I wasn't looking deeply enough. 
index dot underscore raw data. Okay, that should be our 100,000 vectors. Yes, I wonder if it has a shape. I wonder if it's a um, our dimensional vectors. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so there are our vectors, so I don't need to record them. Thank goodness I double checked. And, but the vocab we don't yet store, so I'm gonna store it as a, I'm gonna store it as an array. Uh, a series, I mean. So that way, if it, if it happens to be strings, it will be, we can do dot i look like we were doing earlier to look up a word by its row. Uh, and otherwise, it will, they'll just be a one-to-one -one mapping of numbers, to integers to integers. Okay, now we can do that function. All I need is the index and the vocab, and that's everything we need. So I will take that, I'll go back and find that query that we did and just copy it as a line. Oh, we need the, the actual word that we're querying. So I'm going to do this index equals index and vocab equals vocab. That way, if they happen to be in the global namespace, everything will work. And then the, the first thing is the word. And instead of querying for Kamal, we'll query for the word. And this should give us back a list of words whenever we call it. Get nearest Kamal. No, I didn't return anything. Okay, and it looks like it's sort of a pandas data frame or, or a series or something. Let's see what it is. It's a series, which means we, if we want the word, we look at the index. So I can say dot index. Okay, and then we would say as list, I think is an option, or maybe values. Great, so that gives us an array of strings. So that's what I need to return. Well, let's think about that. When I say get nearest, what am I wanting? Yeah, I'm gonna say get synonyms, or uh, get nearest. We'll leave it like that. And I will just do that at the end. Dot index dot values. I could convert it to a list if I wanted to, but I don't think I do. I think an array is just fine. Okay. Now, what do we do with that list of synonyms? Well, we're going to go through our sentence. For toke in tokes. Uh, uh, oh, we don't have the distance from each of those with, we only, uh, because this thing is returning two things. So we need to go back to our function and fix it up. Let's go back to our function and do something a little bit better. So this is the words. Like first, let's just get back. Wow, this is tricky. Because we want the distance as well, so we don't have to look it up twice. Uh, so this is going to be the indexes of the words. And the second thing is going to, let's see what we got here. Uh, let's cancel out of that. And let's go back to the earlier one. Where is Okay, control R, I, loc, control R, control R, control R, there we go. Okay, that's not quite what we want. Let's get rid of the I, loc. That's the list of indexes. That's the list of indexes again. 
this is the everything. So what I want, if I want the similarities, I have to do square bracket one, square bracket zero. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the lookup and then I'm gonna, so this will be the um, results of the query in this case. Ooh, I don't wanna overwrite the results variable though. Uh, Q results. And now I want to say Q results, and then that the uh, the words are going to be that other thing that we got, uh, which is um, vocab dot i loc square bracket. Uh, let's find back control r i loc that right there. But then so this will be. Um, Words equals Q is I look so I don't need to do the query. That's the only part that I get to substitute. I messed up somehow. Too many square brackets. Okay, good. And then the next thing I need instead of the result words is the similarities. And that's going to be in one square bracket, two. I don't need to I log that. Awesome. Awesome. Now let's put all that into the function. Uh, so let's go back to the function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to return the words and their similarities in that, and I'm going to take that series and I'm going to augment it with the similarities. So I'm returning a data frame, perhaps. That way I'll have the index numbers in case I need them. Let's not. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I, maybe I just want the the words and their Instead of these numbers being indexes, I'll just change those to um, to similarity scores. Let's grab the Q results line of code right here. I should have done a history first before I copy that, put that in the function, and then go into here, change it, get out the query, Q results. And this is the words. And um, place that small with, with the word. Thanks. Maybe this will work. Then the other thing is the similarities. Let's find the similarities line. Oh, I can't find it now. I'm blind. Similarities, similarities, similarities. Oh well, I'll just, oh here it is. It's right above me, right next to me. Okay. Okay, words equals, that looks okay, I think this looks okay. And now I just need to return a data frame with, uh, ooh, I wonder if this is going to work okay. Well, let's first just plug in words without the index and value. I'm just gonna leave it, I'm just gonna make it data frame equal a one series. And then I'm going to, so this, I'll just call it df equals, and then I'm going to add a column. For now, I'm just going to add a column for similarities. Equals uh, q results. I think that'll work. Uh, let's see. 
return df, but this will add a second column. So what I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to get rid of the first column and just overwrite it. Perhaps. In fact, I should just return a series. I should just make the index. I should just make it a series with an index of that. Let's try that first. P dot. Yeah, remove the literal string from all for the uh, word uh, argument. My Q results. Oh, uh, th this right here. The similarities on the Q. No, the Q results. Okay. From all string doesn't need to be replaced with the uh, word argument. Uh, <laughs> you were fixing an error. I was fixing a different error than the one you were trying to mention earlier. Yes. Good catch. Thank you. PD series index equals the words dot. Does words have an index? No, it doesn't. The Q results has an index. Q results, I think. Where did I think Q results had an index? No, 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 Q, no, 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 no. The words did because I did an I log. Okay, this this has got a lot of extra work happening, but let's see if it works at all. Get Q results because query Kamal Q results. Oh, that's the raw query. It's not my get. Let's get nearest. R get nearest. Control R. Control R. Control R. So it's still failing. I uh, can't. Oh, PD dot data frame might work there, but I can just comment out that line since so we're not even using it. But just to make sure, I don't even know if pandas is imported. Uh, uh, I don't know what happened. Okay. Okay, that's looking good. It's got a really small number for similarity to itself, but it doesn't have words in the index, which is a bad problem. So what I need is the words. It index equals is what's being pulled out. I think that'll work better. Okay, uh, so now we've got similarities. Um, and just to make it easier to read. Yeah, ah, this is not similarities. This is distance. Distances, okay. So this gives us a list of synonyms that we need in order to do stuff. Um, so let's use that in our for toke in tokes. And I'm just going to do it within here. Get nearest. Um, get nearest toke. Ooh, I need to have something happen when, when it's not able to find the word in the index. So it's gonna this may raise an exception. Uh, toke, get nearest toke. This is gonna output an array of arrays, which is not quite what we want. Uh, I want the first or the second token. And I don't want the value, I want the index. And, and I also, but only if, uh, this should have been a for loop, because you have to do the get nearest twice. If get nearest, uh, took, uh, dot, um, dot the value if they get nearest to the actual value at I just think I need to do it dot i log at one is less than let's say 
point one. It has to be really close before we consider it. Else toke. What in the world is this craziness going to do? We are all one. It didn't do anything to it at all. So let's make this threshold a little bit bigger, a lot bigger. Let's see if it finds any synonyms. Ha! Huh. That's working pretty well. And interestingly, a, a synonym for the for the period is though. Let's change that to um, three, something more reasonable. Okay, so a, a period is not very close to, so something further away than 0.3. And the synonym for I being you, this is not going to be a good synonym. So obviously, you need to have some good. Huh. All were and are. That's a pretty. Okay. So if you're trying to paraphrase something or give another wording of something, this algorithm might not work too badly. You just set some threshold that's pretty close so that the words actually mean something pretty close to each other. 